Welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and our weekly look back at the hot comics from six months ago. Today we're looking back at the hot comics from March 4th, 2022. I'm recording this on July 31st, 2022. Recording this a little earlier in the week on Wednesday because I got stuff going on later in the week. So I wanted to make sure I got this done and out for you guys by the weekend. But I give you those dates so you know when this information is actually relevant and uh, because the market is always moving and changing so these prices and stuff will not last or necessarily be accurate even you know a week or so from now depending on what comes out and what news happens. Um, as always we're looking back at the CBSI Hot Top 10 and the Comic Tom Key Collector Hottest Trending Comics of the Week. Those are the two lists that I use to look back. There's other lists that you can use but I feel like they do a decent job of giving you kind of just like the the books that are like in the forefront of what people are thinking about that are sparked this week, whether it be new covers or just rumors or option news, that kind of stuff that people are chasing that aren't necessarily like, you know, key keys, but are books that, you know, that are hot on the market at the moment. Uh, we do that so we can understand what books we should chase, what books we shouldn't by looking at how they actually perform once you get away from that news uh, that prompted them to hit the list. So we got 15 books this week, so there was a lot of crossover this week, which is, you know, a lot more than usual. Um, but let's dig into this list and see what we can find out. Uh, first up, we got Irredeemable, number one, uh, from 2009. And this, uh, basically, Mark Wade was hinting that there was going to be some news about this, potentially being, supposedly it had already been an option, but that might actually be going to production or whatever. He was hinting along those lines. I could tell you this was originally supposed to happen like five years ago, and it never did. Um, but anyway, this news caused it to jump up to a $25 to $30 plus book back then. Uh, but now it is a $5 to $15 book. Uh, 9.8, only one sale, did go for $380, uh, $388, but uh, that was only one sale. So it's hard to really judge any kind of thing based on one sale. Uh, interestingly enough, I think we did actually get some of this news because as recently as June, July, this was a 30 to 60, to, like the end of June, early July, this was like a 30 to $60 book, but it has dropped back rapidly from that uh, just in late July into August. And there's been a bunch of sales that say that, no, it's like a five to $15 book now. So it's not like just two or three. It's, you know, it's several sales saying that it's already fallen back. So I don't know if, I don't remember if we actually got news um, back then that caused it to jump up further. But yeah, it has definitely crashed in the last month uh, and turned into a trap overall from six months ago. Uh, next, we have The Six Gun, a free comic book day special from 2010. And this was basically rumors about this getting its own TV series. Uh, caused this to jump up to a $20 to $30 book. Uh, 9.8 of this was hitting $150 to 175 and now this is a two to ten dollar book, and I can tell you most of the sales are closer to the two to five dollar range than the ten, but there are a couple of ten dollar ones. Uh, nine point six, no nine point eight sales recently will only cost you twenty or twenty five dollars, uh, literally with pretty low shipping on those. Um, yeah, this one turned into a dumpster fire. <laughs> this is way down. There appears to be no real interest in this book at the moment. Um, next, our last option book of the week is Bodies Number One. Uh, supposedly Netflix ordered a show for this, which caused this to jump to a $20 to $40 book back then. And now it's a $5 to $12 book, but there was one kind of outlier sale up around $25 that kept me from calling this a dumpster fire and just calling it a trap. Um, it is definitely way down. Most of the sales are in that $5 to, with an average of about $8 sales with occasionally one up to $12. Um, but there was one still higher sale that's kind of mixed in there more recently. So I didn't call this a complete dumpster fire and just a trap, but yeah, another book, Option News. We got away from news or any kind of announcements. It's in production limbo. Uh, yeah, so we'll see if we ever get this, but it's definitely uh, a better time to buy right now than it was back then. Um, next, we're going to move into covers. I only had two covers this week, which is pretty light on covers. Uh, first up, we have Black Panther number four, the Stephanie Hodge one at 25. Uh, this one jumped up to 75 to $90 right out of the gate. Uh, at release, mostly based on the cover, but there was also a little buzz that people thought they might get uh, Tosin in this, which we did not, but the cover alone was driving it pretty well. But this one did not sustain despite getting to triple, uh, between triple and quadruple ratio. It's now a 20 to $50 book. 9.8 will only cost you 100 so this one turned into a trap. So I do wonder how much of the factor was the cover initially, or people hoping Tosin was going to give his second appearance here. 
I don't know, the combination of the two, I think, caused it to jump pretty high initially, but it definitely, the lack of Tosin and just the cover itself were not able to sustain it at those prices. Um, next, our other cover is Moon Knight number nine, the Martin Simmons one in 25. Uh, this one was a 50 to $60 book, which is only double ratio, which is always a warning sign. Um, it's now a 10 to $20 book. 9.8 only cost you 80. This one's a bit of a dumpster fire. Yeah, you're talking about a fifth, a book that was 55 now going for 15. Yeah, that's not a good value at all. Um, so yeah, that one has dropped back a ton. Uh, that's a little more extreme, like, uh, 125s only get to double, don't usually do very well, but they don't usually do this poorly either. This one's a pretty poor performer for a 1 in 25, for sure. Uh, with that, we're going to move into a little bit of comic buzz slash cover. Uh, I put this on both because this has to do with the first appearance, but it's also like the 1 in 25s on all three of these next ones. Uh, first up, we have Star Wars The High Republic Trail of Shadows, number 5. Uh, this has a cameo appearance in the first cover of the Leveler on this David Baldeon 1 in 25. Uh, Leveler was kind of one of the main villainous creatures in the High Republic stuff. Uh, finally, been in the books, finally was coming to the comics. Uh, raw copies of this jumped up to 150 plus uh, with the realization that the Leveler was on the cover. Now it's a $70 to $100 book for a raw copy. 9.8 still going for $200 to $210. So really good value for a 125, just not near the craziness when people were first specking on this. Um, High Republic spec in general has cooled a little bit um, overall because we're kind of in between phases at the moment. And then the next phase is going to be set in the past from what we'd already gotten. So we're not really going to get any development necessarily on some of these characters. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but anyway, uh, this one definitely turned into a bit of a trap. Uh, definitely a big drop here. But... The next book did a little better, and this is uh, actually quite a bit better. This is Star Wars The High Republic number 15, uh, the Ario Anandito uh, 1 in 25. This is the first full appearance of the Leveler. Uh, it was going for 60 to 125 at the gate, so a little lower, um, even though it is the full appearance, but it wasn't the cover. Um, but now it's a 40 to $100 book. 9.8 will cost you 1 to 200, which is kind of funny. But most of the sales are in the $60, $80 range, um, which is very, right now, which is very similar to the note I have from back then, which is most of the sales were 60 to 80 with a few higher sales. It's kind of what we're looking at, just not quite as high. There are a couple sales a little lower than 60, but so I put this as a steady, I'll be back. You can do a little better than the low end of what it was going back then, but for the most part, the sales are right there. So we put this as a steady in an I'll be back on this one. Still doing pretty well. Um, for a 1 in 25 that didn't really like consistently get to triple quadruple. It was sitting right around triple and it's still kind of sitting right there. Uh, next we have Star Wars The High Republic Eye of the Storm number two. This is the Miko Suyan 1 in 25. And this um, has a cool Marjan Rowe who's one of the villain uh, one of the villains back. And this whole thing is his origin and then but it also has the history kind of behind the leveler in here. So that's what people were chasing. This one only got to 60 to 80 back then, but it is still solidly doing 60 to 80 right now. Um, 9.8, 125 to 250. Now this one's definitely been worth it. It's going for exactly what it was back then. Uh, it's been very steady. Uh, I'm sure there's been some wavering in the meantime, but right now it is almost exactly like the numbers that we were seeing back then when it first kind of hit the list. Uh, with that, we're going to move into straight comic buzz and out of the kind of combination. And we have a book that was on the list last week. We have Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 13. This still had to do second week in a row. Still had to do with the solicitation that Billy was, uh, Billy Morales, is Miles' little sister, was going to be in an upcoming series, which has happened. Uh, and this is her first appearance as a baby, which usually doesn't do as well as the book later when they cut show up as an adult, but this was her first appearance as a baby. Back then it was doing $30 for raw copy on average, 9.8 hitting 200. And right now it's a 25 to $50 book. Now, obviously we're just a month or so, I think it was like late June or early July when the storyline actually hit the shelves and it's still going on. So that's part of what's going on here, why this has been kind of steady. Uh, 9.8 have backed up a little bit, but there's very few sales of those compared to like the raw copies. So we call this another worth it. Um, with the storyline going on, it's still kind of holding steady around those same prices that it was back then when we got the solicitations. 
Uh, we'll see what it does once this storyline ends, uh, how long it holds on or if it can maintain these kind of values. Um, next, we have Twig number one, uh, the, or Twig the preview. Uh, that was the Ashcan Wumper Store uh, limited edition, which turned out to maybe not be all that limited because the Kyle Strom and the, uh, they were selling them on their own separately as well, so you could get them. And this is a very interesting one to be on the list for a second week in a row because last week when it was on the list, it was going for 100 to 180. This week it was down. There were still a ton of sales, but it was down to 60 to 125. Like it had spiked based on one sale that was super high, that was signed copy, that was like 350, and everybody went after it. And it was already coming down by the time we got here uh, the second week. Which is funny because now it's actually going for a little bit more. It's a hundred to one hundred fifty dollar book, but I will say that the last of those sales were kind of in mid August, mid to early August. The most recent sale was all the way down to twenty. It'll be interesting to see if, and the only sale for the last week and a half, two weeks, um, it'll be interesting to see if that twenty starts a new pattern. If it actually starts coming down or if it still maintains it around the $100 mark. But overall, to this point, it's been steady and worth it. There was one 9.8 sale recently that wasn't like signed or anything that was 300. Uh, but again, one sale is hard to really judge on at all. But uh, overall, steady and worth it. But that $20 sale would have me uh, maybe waiting and looking for a bargain if you haven't gotten it already and won it. Um, next, we're gonna move into Avengers Forever number three. Uh, so this is the first appearance of several Avengers characters in the 818 so it's kind of alternate universe versions of some of the avengers uh we get an alternate version of tony stark we get infinity thing we get several other ones i didn't list them all here um but yeah so this had a little bit of buzz uh back then raw copies were going for eight bucks now raw copy will cost you five to fifteen so you're talking a book that was going for double ratio and it's still basically going for double ratio so another book that's kind of been steady and worth it wasn't going for that much to begin with. Still sitting in that 5 to 15 range is a minor key. Pretty typical. 9.8 on this one will only cost you 50 to 75. So basically that low end, 10 bucks plus uh, slabbing fees, basically is what you're looking at. So, um, and sh slabbing and shipping fees. So yeah, it's pretty much going for cost at this point. Um, but so we'll see. This one has been worth it to this point, but that worth it is pretty low. So. Uh, next, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 209, another book related to Craven movie casting announcements, and we got casting of Calypso, um, is what caused us to hit the list, so, and this is the first appearance in Origin of Calypso, um, Craven's love interest, uh, raw copies back then were going for 65, 9.8, hit 600, now it's a five to twenty-five dollar book. Occasionally, a really high grade copy will go for more than twenty-five, but uh, for the most part, copies are in that five to twenty-five dollar range, even for pretty high grade. Uh, Nine point eight is going to cost you four to four fit twenty-five, so that's slipped down a couple hundred bucks. So this one's definitely turned into a trap. We'll see. I don't know how much faith anybody has in these Sony Spider verse movies at this point, but. Uh, Still a little bit, because it's still going for pretty good value, but uh, definitely a better time to chase Calypso than six months ago. Uh, next, the last three books actually on our list this week all have to do with uh, a little bit of Batman rumors and that kind of stuff following the release of The the Batman. Uh, and back then it was rumors about what would be in a, a sequel. Um, first up, we have Batman number two uh, from the New 52. This is the first appearance of Talon. And there's rumors that we might get a Court of Owls storyline in uh, the sequel. So that's what caused us to hit the list. Uh, raw copies were going for 20 bucks back then. 9.8 hit 250. Now, which is actually it's down from like when it had been years ago when it first came out and stuff. But still, 250. Uh, now, raw copy will cost you 5 to $20. Uh, 9.8 will cost you 1 to 150. So this definitely turned into an I'll be back borderline trap. Uh, on this one is nobody's really jumping on this one at the moment, which is funny because the next book we're going to talk about hit the list for the same reasons, and yet people are jumping on it right now. Uh, and that is Batman number 609, uh, the first appearance of Hush. So this hit the, la the list back then because people were debating on, well, we're going to get Court of Owls, or maybe we'll get Hush, or something like that. Those were things people were suspecting for the sequel to the Batman um, 
which caused us back then to jump up to a $40 book. 9.8 hit 175. This book was also a month ago and I'll be back. Um, but in the last week, we got rumors that uh, basically, we didn't get rumors, we got confirmation that uh, despite all the stuff going on, Warner Brothers Discovery managed to sign Matt Reeves to an exclusive deal to keep making Batman movies. So he's going to make a sequel and he started working on it. So people started specking on this book again. Uh, now it's a $30 to $60 book uh, with most of the sales sitting around 50 9.8, 175 to 225. So this is actually our up and worth it book of the week, all based on timing. Um, again, a month or so ago, you could have done better. Uh, it would have been kind of an I'll be back from six months ago. But now, based on the news of the last week, it's an up and worth it. So that's why you always kind of like want to avoid news. You kind of look for ebbs and flows in the market because there are opportunities. And that even our one up book, there was opportunities to do a little better uh, if you've been watching through there. So, and then our last book of the week is Batman the Long Halloween Special Number 1. Uh, this is, was a special variant cover that was given away at IMAX showings of the movie. Uh, back then, people were chasing this for 20 to 30 bucks. Uh, now it's a dollar to ten dollar book. Uh, this one definitely turned into a bit of a dumpster fire. Uh, there's really no real market for this, with most of the sales really being down toward the dollar end of this. Um, plus shipping. So you're maybe you're talking about people are paying five, six bucks. So, um, but yeah, so that is our list for the week. Um, only 15 books. We actually had several books, particularly those Star Wars, the High Republic stuff. Um, but a couple other books, we had five books this week that were steady, um, which is pretty good compared to what we've been having uh, for sure. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and we will catch you next time.